Hi, my name is Irene Davis, and I'm here tonight to speak to you about the benefits of minimal footwear in adult walking and running. So we have some pretty amazing adaptable feet, and it's because of the complexity of the foot. We have 26 bones, 33 articulations, each with six degrees of freedom of motion, and 10 arch muscles that are organized in four layers. And it's because of this um, complexity that it has many functions, such as it provides our base of support, it's a rigid lever for push off, a mobile adapter for an uneven terrain, serves as a shock attenuator, and as a spring. Um, and because of this, the human foot is really well suited for walking and running locomotion all by itself without any footwear at all. Now, in terms of normal function, these four layers of arch muscles are very important um, for, because they control the deformation of the arch with each foot strike. So what you see on the left is a model of the foot and that's the plantar fascia that you see getting stretched and becoming red. And it's the muscles of the arch that actually help to control that deformation and control that stretch. Someone who has very strong arch muscles, like the person on the right, maintains an arch even when they're fully loaded. If we look at the foot from the front, on the left video, you can see that the foot splays in a beautiful way and needs to be allowed to splay in order to distribute the forces under the entire foot. If you look at the video on the right, you can see that as a person pushes off, they've got a really strong and beautiful arch. And I'm gonna argue that mod modern footwear interferes with this beautiful natural motion. So some of the problems with modern footwear, the first one I'm gonna discuss is the um, chronic support. Very much like foot orthoses, these are braces for the foot that when worn chronically is really analogous to wearing a neck brace chronically. You wouldn't do that because you know that that's gonna result in weakening of the neck muscles. You won't be able to hold your head up. And the very same thing is true if you support the foot. In a study of the effect of 12 weeks of orthotic use on the cross-sectional areas of the muscles of the arch, you can see that the individuals who were randomized into the orthotic group, and these are healthy individuals, they had a 10 to 17% reduction in the size of their muscles in just 12 weeks. And we know that weak feet can be associated with a number of foot pathologies, such as plantar fasciitis, very common in runners. Another problem with modern footwear is the cushioning. So we know cushioning actually promotes a rear foot strike pattern. If you look at this um, picture, the runner on the left is a barefoot runner and they're landing on the ball of their foot with their foot underneath their knee. While the person in the, on the right is landing with his foot outstretched and about to slam his heel into the ground. When you land with a rear foot strike pattern, you have, um, this is the vertical ground reaction force. This is a force that the body experiences when you land. You have this impact peak, the dotted line, that is associated with that heel strike that is missing in a four foot strike pattern. And you get that every single foot strike and we have a thousand foot strikes per mile. So if you're running 20 miles a week, that's a million foot strikes or impacts per year. The slope of that impact peak right here is referred to as the load rate. And increased load rates have been associated with a number of um, running injuries, such as patellofemoral pain, um, IT band syndrome, and plantar fasciitis, just a few. Um, another problem with modern footwear is the flares that are associated with the outer sole. So you can see here that the, um, this typical conventional shoe has a posterior flare right there. And when we land, we land on the back of the heel and that force creates a plantar flexion moment that the anterior tibialis muscle in the shin has to control and it gets overused. If you look from the back of the shoe, what you'll see is that there's a medial and lateral flare. We land on the lateral side of the shoe. Um, and so what happens is that flare then increases the pronatory torque on the foot. So as the, fo the foot goes into pronation, it puts a lot of load on the medial muscles of the foot and arch, such as the posterior tib tibialis tendon. If you compare this to minimal shoes, what you're gonna see is there is no posterior flare and there is no lateral flare. These flares result in, joint, in increased joint torques, and there's a study that showed that conventional shoes increase not only the foot, but the knee and the hip joint torques as well. 
So while barefoot is our evolutionary legacy, we need sometimes to protect the bottom of our foot. And this is what minimal footwear can do and serve as a proxy for barefoot. These are some examples of minimal shoes. Um, they're highly flexible, you can roll them up. They clearly have no motion control, they have no cushioning, zero drop from the heel to the toe, no arch support, no midsole. And this is not a new concept. So these are the shoes of Ron Hill who won the Boston Marathon in 1970. So before 1970, shoes were very minimal. In fact, perhaps more minimal than the shoes that are a minimal of today. So in terms of looking at how barefoot compares to minimal shoes, you can see this runner on the left panel is in a pair of cushioned shoes and landing with a rear foot strike pattern and you can see the impact transient. The same individual is now running in a pair of minimal shoes on the ball of his foot and that impact transient is gone. We then had the person run barefoot and you can see that the, the ground reaction forces, the mechanics are very similar between the two. So although you don't have the same sensory input as barefoot, the mechanics actually are quite similar. So some of the benefits of wearing minimal shoes, the first one I wanna talk about is strength. We conducted a study looking at three groups of individuals during walking, one group that were in a conventional cushion shoe, one the group that did a foot exercise program to strengthen the arch and the last group walked in a minimal shoe and we used ultrasound to look at the cross-sectional area of the of the um, muscles and this is just one muscle flexor digitorum brevis you can see that the minimal shoe and the foot exercise group both significantly increased in their size while the control group did not and we found the same thing for the four muscles that we looked at and in fact in three of the four muscles, the difference between the minimal shoe and the foot exercise group was really, there was no difference between them. And that, that actually suggests that walking in a pair of minimal shoes is just as efficacious as doing a, an eight week foot strengthening program. We also looked at running. Um, we did a three week calf exercise program to prepare the calf. Um, and then we had two groups, one randomized into minimal shoes, one into uh, a cushion shoe. And this was, uh, we followed them over six months. And what you can see here is that the volume, we used MRI in this case to look at the foot muscle volume, was significantly increased in the individuals in the minimal shoes. And these findings have been supported by a number of other studies. Uh, in fact, every single study that has been conducted has found strengthening of the foot muscles with minimal shoe use. So that's pretty powerful. Now, Another benefit of minimal sh shoe wear is its effect on the patellofemoral joint and potential effect on patellofemoral joint pain. So here are two um, conditions. Uh, in the top panel, the person is running with a heel strike pattern. In the bottom panel, they're in a forefoot strike pattern, which is more, which is promoted by with use of minimal shoes. And you can see the difference in the ground reaction forces with the impact peak in the rear foot striker and missing in the forefoot strike. And what I'm indicating here is very early in stance, you can see that the force of the forefoot striker is much lower than the rear foot striker because the load rate, the slope is lower. Additionally, the knee is in greater flexion, and when the knee is in greater flexion, there's greater contact area between the patella and the femur. And so if you have a lower force and a greater contact area, that results in a reduction in the patellofemoral joint stress during this loading phase, which is an important phase of gait. This stress is related to patellofemoral joint pain. Now, in a study that supports this, um, this was a study in which a musculoskeletal model was used uh, to determine the peak patellofemoral joint force. And they had a number of runners who ran in a variety of different types of shoes, with zero being most maximal and 100 being most minimal. And what they found is that there was a progressive reduction in the patellofemoral force as you ran in more and more minimal shoes. So another support, another benefit of minimal shoes. And then finally, I wanna talk about the effect on the Achilles tendon. So in this particular study, um, uh, this was a study looking at individuals who were habituated to traditional shoes versus minimal shoes and looked at the strength, uh, the force generated by the, the, the calf muscles, the cross-sectional area of the tendon, the elongation of the tendon and stiffness. And what they found is that in the individuals who were in the minimal shoes, they had a increase in the um, 
the cross-sectional area, they had an increase in the stiffness of the tendon and a reduction in the um, elongation. And, and elongation is, is not a positive thing for a tendon. You want less elongation in order to have greater stiffness. And stiffness is a healthier tendon because it stores and releases energy to a greater degree. So stronger, stiffer tendons. In a related study, this is looking at strike pattern. And again, forefoot strike being more related to a minimal shoe. Um, you see that the individuals over the course of one stride, um, the, for, the people who are habitual forefoot strikers had significantly stiffer tendons than those who are rearfoot strikers. Again, suggesting that this is a benefit. Um, if you take into consideration, there's a 52% lifetime incidence of Achilles tendinopathy in runners, and 95% of them are rear foot strikers. You have to wonder what would those statistics be if people were running with a four foot strike pattern in minimal shoes. So just a note of caution, if you're not adapted to running in minimal shoes, you should take time to adapt. And it's really these structures, the gastroc, the soleus, um, your posterior tib muscles, your um, arch and your plantar fascia, as well as your metatarsals, all of those structures posteriorly and medially are at risk uh, because they're loaded more. And so you need to have a program that strengthens the foot and ankle muscles while you also progress your mileage very slowly. So in summary, I believe that barefoot locomotion is our evolutionary legacy, but minimal footwear can be proximal for barefoot running. And as the minimal footwear doesn't pro provide any cushioning or support, the foot and lower leg must provide it and therefore it must become stronger. Um, there are many other health benefits, musculoskeletal benefits to minimal footwear that I mentioned, but it does take time to adapt, especially in running where the forces are higher. Um, I just want to end by saying that if we start our kids in minimal shoes, there'll be no adaptation that's needed. And I believe that this could be one piece of the holy grail to reducing musculoskeletal injuries. Thank you.